Hello loved ones. Thank you for joining me today. And if you're new to the channel, then welcome to the family. Today, I will be reviewing Married at First Sight Season 15, Episode 11, After Party. Since the spouses dug up the dirt on each other and learned more about each other, the episode was called The Digging Up the Dirt. It was another action-packed episode where they spilled all the tea. They discussed Nate and Sasia's discussion with Nate's father, Mitch's visit to his father's gravesite, Justin's experience with his brother as a father figure, and Morgan and Ben's uncomfortable group discussion. Be sure to subscribe so that you can be part of the congregation and please comment so that you can be part of the conversation. And with that, let's get started. Welcome to Fuel by Intentions, where we talk about faith, family, finances, fitness, and fun. Sponsored by Bynum's Business Solutions, where the right fit is made simple. We specialize in tips, tools, and strategies designed to help you achieve your financial health so that you can take control of how you spend your money so that you can spend more time with your family, friends, and doing the things you love. So let's jump right into the video. The show was hosted, of course, by the beautiful Keisha Knight Pullman. Her guests were Mitch, Nate, and Justin. We started off the show looking like we were watching The Temptations because the guys were doing some kind of swaying routine when the show started and I thought that was so cute. I just love to see people having fun. Keisha began by asking her first question. How was it opening up to your spouses about your childhood? Mitch says it was great. The more he opens up, the more he shows his vulnerability, the more Kristen likes him, the more he feels comfortable and things just go well. Nate says, Stasia likes to get deep. He did all he could to be specific about his childhood memories and they were able to connect. Justin says, it's been easy to be open and he was glad that Alexis was there to experience it. We then moved on to our first clip and it was Nate and Stasia visiting with Nate's father in front of Nate's childhood home. Stasia asked, was it hard being a single dad managing? And Nate's dad said people commended him for taking care of his kids. And with tears in his eyes, he said he would not have it any other way. I am so glad that was his answer. I know people all the time, they commend single dads for taking care of their children. They do not comment or commend single moms as much, but it is a dad's responsibility to take care of their children. So I don't know why we commend people for doing what is their responsibility. I'm sure it's just because even though it's their responsibility, we don't see it very often. And it just gets on my nerves when I hear dads saying that they are babysitting their children. You cannot babysit your children you are caring for your children. So I really did like that they, Nate's dad said that he wouldn't have it no other way. This was Nate's first time seeing his dad cry. Nate says that his dad did the best he could, but they struggled. Sometimes they had hot ramen and sometimes they had hot dogs for dinner. He had a bed and a place to sleep and all the fundamentals that a dad could do. But the emotional stuff wasn't there and it was not expected. He said he made his own decisions because his dad worked all the time. Being young and having a lot of energy, he got into trouble a lot. He says he got into trouble because he was young and he did not know how to make decisions. He got in trouble like fist fights with other kids, but nothing crazy. He again confirms that he only met his mom once. Not having her in his life made him lack understanding of other people. And also he lacks having empathy and sympathy. 
he says he experienced things on a surface level and he protects himself from connecting to other people. As soon as he says, sees a red flag, he cuts people off. Stasia is teaching him how to go deeper. Mitch says he was raised by his dad beginning in the fourth grade. He said his dad always provided for them, but he was a latchkey kid and had freedom. He walked home from school, had friends over, and he wreaked havoc in the neighborhood. He had no supervision. By high school though, he was exposed to the nuclear family by hanging out with friends. He realized that this is what it's all about. He says not having a nuclear family definitely affected him. Justin says not having his dad taught him what not to do. He said his brother said don't cry, but his mother encouraged him to show emotions. He is comfortable showing emotions and he does not care what others think. We then moved on to our next clip and it was Mitch paying respects to his late father's resting place and with Kristen by his side. He introduces his dad to Kristen. Mitch says his dad would have liked Kristen because she is strong and she puts him in his place, but she also meets him where he is. He said one thing that we did not see is that he visited his aunt who died due to the pandemic and also his grandparents while they were at the cemetery. Nate says that Kristen and Mitch's strength is also their weakness. They are very firm on saying what they believe, but this can cause problems when they find something that they disagree on. We then move on to our next clip and it's Mitch reading his letter to Kristen. He tells himself, you're gonna feel isolated a lot, but it's not because you're different. It's because you haven't learned how to process your feelings and talk about them with people you trust. You don't know how to admit when you're scared or when you're sad. Thanks to all those mishaps along the way and the lessons they teach you, you'll recognize the path when you find it. So take care of yourself. Mitch says it was weird hearing his letter. He has always journaled to process emotions, but hearing it back is weird, but liberating. I am so excited that Mitch revealed to us that he is a journaler, and that is an excellent way to process your emotions and really just be able to be free and open with yourself. So if you do not journal, I recommend that you begin journaling. It is very therapeutic. Justin commends Mitch for being vulnerable in front of millions of people. But Mitch says he did not remember that it would be millions. Keisha then asked Nate, what was he most nervous to reveal to Stasia in the letter he wrote to his younger self? Nate says he thinks Stasia has this idea of him hiding things and not wanting to be vulnerable, but he says he is comfortable with being vulnerable. He says he is a modern man. He does yoga, meditates, and listens to morning affirmations. Keisha then asks, have they noticed any growth in themselves? And Mitch says, watching the episodes and seeing how he comes off, he is holding himself to a high standard of having to be perfect in every way. And it's coming off judgmental and prickly. He recalls his wedding episode. He was freaking out the whole time, but in his head, he thought he was playing it cool. He says he was projecting and that's painful for him to watch. He's realizing the way he affects other people. We then moved on to our next clip and it was Justin talking to Alexis in the park about his childhood. He tells her his brother was 19 when he took him in and he was 13. His brother would always tell him to figure it out when he asked for help. Justin was glad that Alexis was supportive and empathized but wished her actions matched her words. He says it's easy to say you understand, but when you're in an argument, 
and the side of that person comes out, it's not easy to put that understanding into action. Keisha asked Justin, how did he end up living with his brother? Justin says his family struggled financially. He grew up fast and his mom had a hard time keeping up with his growth. His brother hated watching his mom struggle and was in a position to help and decided he was going to make a man out of Justin. He appreciates everything his brother did for him in many ways. He wished he had done things differently. He says he has PTSD from having to figure it out and still has this mentality. He says he was raised to depend on no one but himself and to take care of himself. If you figure it out, you will never hit rock bottom. And if you figure it out, next time that same issue comes up, you will know exactly how to handle it. Keisha says Justin's brother taught him how to survive. Now Justin must learn how to thrive. Keisha asks, did they have any aha moments when learning about their spouse's childhood? Nate says that he learned that Stasia was introverted, shy, and quiet. Conquering adversity made her a stronger person, and now she is not a shy person. He learned why she is the way she is, and it's from her childhood. We then move on to our next clip, and it was Mitch and Kristen at the softball field, and Mitch learning that softballs are not soft. Mitch learned why Kristen has a drive to succeed and why she is so driven. She had a lot of passions and had to put them aside as a kid to be responsible. He respects that and he was able to empathize and he saw her more human side. Keisha asked Justin what he learned through the process and Justin says he discovered early on that he gets in his own head. He has possibly messed up many relationships and friendships. He says he creates another narrative that wasn't it at all, but it is just in his head. He says this was an epiphany for him, a big deal, because it's something that's going to benefit him as he moves forward in life. We then move on to our last clip and Miguel is playing the expert. Morgan says Ben is telling her that lies are awful and horrible, but he has been lying to her face daily. At any point in time, he could have come to her and said, today I had a bad day. I talked to Justin and here's what I told him. And it would have been handled much differently. Morgan feels there is a lack of accountability on Ben's part and Ben agrees. However, I do not think that Morgan is telling the truth about that. If Ben already has a hard time talking to her and we see that nobody can get a word in edgewise, she still would have called him a lie and said, I told you not to talk to, to Justin. I don't think that we would be seeing anything different. She still would have said he broke her trust. I don't think she would have had any compassion for him at all, even if he would have came to her and confessed that he had been talking to Justin. But we will never know. Justin says he was frustrated by Morgan because she made it seem like Ben was being malicious and that is not Ben's character. Nate says Alexis is the root issue because if you're talking with your wife, that should stay within the house. Alexis talking to Morgan caused the whole rift in the first place. Justin agrees and says Alexis breaking his trust killed his friendship with Ben. Mitch says he was team Ben, but then hearing Morgan's side, he did a 180. Mitch believes that their issue is their inability to communicate with each other. That is the root cause. Hearing Morgan's side did not change Dustin's opinion. Nate says when Morgan came in, it basically changed everything. He was disappointed that Ben was not sharing all the information, but he would not call it a lie. But he says Ben was exaggerating things, so it made things look different when he could have been very direct about things. But I think that Ben was not being direct about things because he was not trying to bring it to camera. 
he was talking to Justin off camera about his marital issues on a show where they encourage you to talk about your issues on camera. I think that Ben is being vague and I think that Morgan is not really saying what was said because they are both trying to keep the details of this conversation off camera. And so I think that Ben is respecting Morgan by still just trying to accept responsibility and not bring whatever he said to camera. But I think if Morgan keeps bringing it up and keeps making Ben look like a villain, then maybe we'll find out what it was. Well, Nate thinks the underlining issue is Ben does not like conflict and will do whatever it takes to avoid conflict. Nate says he is optimistic and he thinks they can overcome if Morgan lets her walls down and Ben is more open and transparent. But Mitch is not sure if they can get past this issue. Well, that was it for this episode. What did you think about it? I don't think that Justin and Nate get along very well. What are your thoughts? Do you think Morgan and Ben can mend fences and make it to decision day? Do you think Ben was being vague to protect Morgan's reputation on camera? Let me know what you think by sounding off in the comments. They then give us a sneak peek of what's to come. Miguel and Lindy take care of a baby alive. Kristen and Mitch put the brakes on intimacy. Stafia is back to not trusting Nate. Morgan claims she has to defend herself because Ben's vindictiveness. Alexis is not sure she wants to be married to Justin and Dr. Pia hosts one-on-ones with the couple. Looks like another jam-packed episode. Be sure to see season 15, episode 11 show review next. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, live with intention. Be intentional.